Hey guys, so someone gave me a really good idea for a video. They said everyone who does Floss 2 videos is always talking about how difficult it is, not difficult, tedious I guess, to do a video. So she wanted me to show how I do a video from start to finish, the setup, the editing, all of that. Now. I do a couple different types of videos, so the setup is different for each one. I do the Stitch With Me videos, I do tutorials, and I do my regular weekly updates where I show you what I bought and I stitched and all that. So first, if I'm doing a tutorial that is not in my office, like on my stitching stand, like my canvas tutorials, I do them out here in my dining room. So, I have to clear the table. Normally all this stuff is not sitting here. But these are all the supplies that I use to do a canvas tutorial. So I have to bring all of this in from my closet in my office because I'm a neat person. I don't wanna just let this sit here for months for every time I do a tutorial. So I get everything set up. Here is my tripod. I'm trying something different there for my next one. Usually the tripod, I had it up here and then facing down onto the mat. But I think I'm going to this time, I put it on this chair and now I don't remember how I had it. Okay. I put it on this chair and I'm going to try to have the camera aimed down there to really be able to see up close what I'm doing. So for these tutorials, once I'm done filming all of this, I have to clean all of that up and put it back in my closet. Okay, if I am doing a Stitch With Me video, I get my project. Setup for a Stitch With Me video is pretty simple. I sit down here, turn on my light, pull my stitching close to me, I will usually take the pattern off of the needle minder and put it over here so you guys aren't seeing the pattern when I'm stitching. And here is my Lowry with my little tripod stuck in there. So I will pull this towards me just like this. My phone gets clamped in here and then I'm adjusting the phone to make sure that you guys can see my stitching and stuff up close. So the setup for this is pretty easy. Once I'm done stitching, all I do is push this back out of the way, push my stitching out of the way, and then I can go to uh, start editing and uploading my video to my computer. The most time consuming setup and cleanup is for my weekly updates, because here's how I do it. So now I film in my office again, okay? I use my office chair, so I pull my chair out like that. But I also use this table to set all my stuff on. So I now have to clean off this table, and usually I'll just move the stuff over here. I'm not trying to make anybody sick by going too fast. I will, you know, I pull the cloth off and my scissors out of there. And then I pull the table over, pull the table over here in front of my chair. Now I have to get everything out of my closet that I want to talk about. In my closet, all of this stuff, this, this, all of this right here is what I want to talk about in my video. So I will pull out everything. I will pull everything out of my closet. Oh, I forgot about that, so it's in there. And if it gets to be too crowded, which it might be, I'll set some stuff on the floor or in my chair over here that I can easily grab when I'm filming. So let me try to grab some of this stuff without like knocking everything over because I'm planning on doing, oh shit, God damn it. Okay. I'm planning on doing a weekly update video uh, Monday, maybe. I was hoping to do it Friday, but 
That didn't happen because I was at the hospital with my grandfather on Friday. Okay, so see, I'm just pulling all of my crap out. This is a lot of crap I have here. Not crap, stuff, good stuff, stitch of stuff. Okay, and usually I'll try to organize it, but this is so much stuff, I'm just gonna have to. I'm still trying to pull it all and hold the phone with one hand. Okay, yeah, this stuff is so much. Okay, so here's the pile. Now, normally when I sit down before I even hit record, I will probably try to go through that and organize it so I know what I'm talking about. But I might not. It all depends on my mood that day. Now, I have another tripod that I use. So I pull this out. This is the tripod. And I extend the legs all the way because I have this standing in front of my table. So I am pulling. I'm making this as tall as it can be. So it will, this is hard to do with one hand. So it will, um, why did that do that? Jesus. There we go. Wait a minute, I'm still trying to adjust the tripod here. Okay, because the tripod, there's the tripod. I put my phone in here, facing me. And what I'll do is I will turn, like, let's, we're gonna pretend that the, the, my phone is in there. I will turn it on and hit the camera button so I can see what you guys are gonna see to make sure I'm in the frame properly, that you can't see like any, any extraneous stuff. I will do that. Now you can see the lighting is not that great in my office. About two months ago, I bought two stand up lamps that I keep in my dining room because I don't have enough room in my craft room, my office, and it's these. You can see how they are on tripods too. So I have to bring both of these in one at a time because they're somewhat heavy. I set one over here. You can see where it's set up. I set one over there and then I go and get the other one. Now I may be able to carry, I don't remember if I carry both of these at the same time. I might, but I'm holding my phone with my one hand so that's not gonna work this time. So I bring the other one in and I put the other one on the other side of the tripod. So let me get over here so you can see. So if you look, this is what I'm seeing. These lights are really bright. This really lights up my office and lets uh, true colors come through and everything. Those lamps were really inexpensive on Amazon. I wanna say I paid 20 bucks for the set, if that. I don't even think I paid that. So I have to plug those in. So I plug those in. Puppy. I plug those in right there. Okay, as I am, then I sit down to record. Pretend the lamps are on because I'm not plugging all that in and doing all that. As I'm going through my video and recording and showing, I will be moving all of this stuff. And I either move it over here to my desk, I will put it on the floor, all of that. So once I'm done filming the video, I have stuff everywhere. I'm just going to put some stuff where I would probably put it to show you. And some things I would probably actually still leave on the table. So... I get done filming the video. I unplug the lamps, roll their cords back up, put them back out in the dining room. I clean up all of this stuff, put it all away, move my chair back, move the table back, put all of my stuff that was on that table originally back on the table. And then I sit down to get my video into my computer, into Windows Movie Maker and edit. So I will show you that step next. Okay, one thing I did forget to mention is 
I take notes all week long in this notebook. Like you can use any notebook, but I just have like this mermaid one right here. And I'm gonna show you the page of notes that I have for this week's video. All week long as things come up that I either wanna talk about or that I see online. These are my future video list, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, look, here are all my notes that I've been jotting down. So I will tear out this page because these tear out pretty easy. And I will have this sitting like in my vision so I can see it when I'm recording my update. Because there's no way that I would even remember all the stuff that normally happens in a week. So yeah. And then when I'm done, I just throw this piece of paper away when I'm cleaning up. So, okay, the next part is getting my video into the computer, into Windows Movie Maker, editing, and then uploading to YouTube. So I will show you that next. Okay, I just recorded a small tutorial so I can show you how I upload the video and start editing it. That is the most time consuming process of doing a video in my opinion. So what I will do is I have this cord, this pink cord, USB, and the end hooks right into my phone. So I plug it in. And I'm waiting for it to pull up my, I click on my computer. Now it's not registering that I plugged it in. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm here and I click on, I really want you to be able to see this. I can't lower the tripod anymore though. Let me see something. because the camera is over there. Let me try it over here. Okay, that's probably better, I think. Okay, that's gonna have to work. Well, you know what, I can probably tilt this up a little bit. There you go, you can see that pretty good. Okay, so I have to click on right here. This is my phone. I go to my camera. And I will pull off, okay, that was the first part of the video. And see how it's like copying it to my desktop. I will pull off, oh, there's another piece of it, okay. This is the, I did two other pieces of this video. Okay, here is the tutorial. So I, I just drag and drop it on my desktop. And then I will go to Windows Movie Maker. Click here, I click here. I go to my desktop. And this imports the video. Now, this takes a little bit of time. Actually, it does, I don't even think that didn't take any time at all. When I do like my weekly update and they're like 40 or 50 minutes, it takes a good couple of minutes to import this video in here. So, what I normally do is I now have to go to PicMonkey and I gotta make my opening slide. So click on edit. I have photos saved in a folder called FlossTube on my desktop. So I go to the Blue Roses one that you guys always see is my opening slide. And I wanna add text to it. Now I have to go back to my notebook 
to see what number of video this is going to be because I have done so many and sometimes I've done I've filmed a couple in one day okay so this is going to be video 116 if I can find a pan okay so I will type in here lost tube number 116 and I'll put snag nabbit tutorial you know you name it whatever easy title for this one so I will usually you know what, I'll do it like that I will move this around and I will make this as big as I can because I realize that you guys want to see a big title I'm guessing I mean it, you want to be able to see it so that's done now I have to save that to my desktop. And it's saving it. Okay. That is saved. Now, what I also have to do in here is I will do my stock photo, like my custom thumbnail that when you guys go into YouTube and if you go like directly to my channel, you will see a stock photo and because I usually I will usually take a picture of whatever I am going to do first but I forgot to do it for the snag nabbit but I am sure I can go off the internet and just grab a photo of a snag nabbit so I'm searching for snag nabbit yeah I can probably just take this one where is this one I'm going to go to Amazon and try to take their picture. I mean, it's just a picture of the product anyway. Okay, so I hit right click, save image, and I'll put snag nabbit still because that tells me that that is the beginning picture that I put when I do my uh, YouTube video. Now, I looked up when I first started doing a bunch of these to have a good custom thumbnail it needs to be 1280 by 720 so I will usually go in because I have photo software on my computer I will go in here and try to size that let's see because right now it's it's probably gonna be way too blurry if I do 1280 by 720 it's gonna stretch it out yeah that's too stretched out I don't like that so what am I gonna do about that normally I will take the picture like long ways so I can make it wide if that makes any sense because I will add text to that that says snag nabbit tutorial or something so let's see if I can find another picture that oh maybe I need to take that one I need to take a picture like that crap um, okay I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna take my own picture somewhere of it that way I can manipulate it better so I will be right back Okay, so I took another picture, my own picture, of the snag nabbit with the piece that I demonstrated on. So I had that saved to my desktop, and I will click that first. See, there's my picture. And I will be able to resize this. So first, I'll flip it. Where is that? Rot I'll rotate it left. That way I can see it like that. And then I will resize it to the 1280 by 720. Why did that do that? What the hell is going on? what I hit before. 
I go into pixels and do 1280 by 720. Hit OK, and that's the perfect size for the thumbnail. Now, right here, I'm probably going to put the text. I'll put Snag Nabbit Tutorial, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I will save this to my desktop. Then I go into PicMonkey. I don't know why I did that. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I got to put the picture in there. I open the picture I just took. I want to add text to it. So I will usually increase the text size to like 96. And I always use white letters if I can. And I will do a drop shadow. All right, and then I just start typing. I'm going to type snag nabbit, if I can type. Snagnabbit tutorial. Now I have to kind of stretch this a little bit because there we go. That's perfect. I will put that right there. And depending on what the the still is, the picture, my te my text will be anywhere. But I'm going to do that right there. So then I have to save it to my desktop. I mean, you can already see what's involved and I haven't even started editing the video yet. <laughs> okay now I go back to Windows Movie Maker and right here at the beginning I will add my opening slide and I have to drag it now I want to add my music that I always do my intro with so I have that already saved on my computer and I already know, like, how much time it should be. So I always do fade in, fade out for that. And when I do the tutorials, I will add music to that as well. So first I'm going to do an animation where it kind of, it's like going, it does like a screen thing. A transition it should be, I would think. Okay, I did that. Then I have to add music to the rest of the tutorial. I will pick this one. Then I have to go in and I will do the slow... I will also turn down the music volume so the music is not overpowering my voice. Okay. Now I will play the video. I'm not going to play it right now, but I watch every single one of my videos back because I edit every single one. Um, this one is doesn't really need any editing because it's just the tutorial. When I edit my weekly updates, they take a long time because sometimes I'm inserting pictures or I may have forgotten something in a video. So I will put a text on the on a certain slide where you use the caption option in Windows Movie Maker. So. Let's just say I watch this back and I'm to the end. When I get to the end, I have an ending slide that once again, I've already saved in my computer. I do a transition from the end of my video to the slide and they have a billion of them. I just pick any old one. Oh, I do have to watch this back somewhat. Oh no, I just need to cut that off. I will let, when I record, I will uh, let the camera run for like 10 or 15 seconds after I say bye to you guys so I can easily cut that out and have a smooth transition. And then I back this up a little bit because I want the music to start, my ending music. I want it to start while I'm saying thanks for watching and subscribing blah 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 so go in there slow fade in slow fade out I will turn down the volume because the volume is usually pretty loud on those okay so this video is done now I have to go up here and save the movie and when I save it 
it wants me to add a title, and usually I'll put like the floss to, what did I say it was, 116? So I save it as a Windows Media movie file, and now this is where the time starts to take. This is only like a five minute video, so it probably will not take that long to process. You can see right here, it's telling me. When I do like my weekly update or when I did my tutorial that was an hour, it took a good hour to process it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is already at like 25%. This one isn't gonna to take too long. But yeah, every video is different as far as um, the time it takes to do it. The longest part, I think, is getting it into YouTube. Um, yeah, this is going pretty quickly for this one. It's already at 40% processed. Okay, the video is done processing through Windows Movie Maker. I close out of this. Then I go to YouTube. That's not where I wanted to go. I don't know why it wants to constantly bring me to YouTube Editor that I haven't used in months and is now gone anyway from YouTube. Okay, I go to here. I will click on this arrow up here to upload. I'm going to make this one public so it can go up today, but when I record like four or five videos in a day and I want one to go up every day, I have to hit scheduled and I schedule the date. So I go to where my video is, right here, click open, and it's starting to upload. So I click on a couple things. I click on monetization because I do monetize my channel. I also click on, so no one can see thumbs up and thumbs down because I don't even look at those anymore myself. Then I start doing the description box, the tags. I always do the tags as floss tube, cross stitch. Really? Needlework. And I will also put the name of the product usually as a tag. And in the description, Okay, so I'm in YouTube. I put the title in there. I usually put a description, like I'm gonna put, I demonstrate how I use the Snag Nabbit tool. And I will usually then put my links in because I try to link to people's channels, to whatever I mentioned in the video. So now I have to go to one, two, three stitch because that's where I got it look that product up it's only a dollar sixty nine at one two three stitch so I copy and paste the link put it in this box then I go down here to the custom thumbnail remember when I edited that picture I go and find that where is it I think it's this one yeah so I will upload that to it which will take a minute. See, it's saying up at the top, there's 11 minutes remaining to upload a five minute video. So you do the math on that. When I have a video that is 40, 50 minutes or even an hour, it will take sometimes two and a half hours just to upload the video. Now, normally I will not sit here and wait for that. I will have it uploading and I will be doing other things. When I do my weekly update, I will upload it like this and then clean up sometimes. Now, I'm going to make this one public so it goes up immediately because I don't have any other videos in my queue to be uploaded, but I will hit scheduled on this if I'm going to schedule a video to go up in the future. So I'm going to hit publish. So as soon as this is done processing in 10 minutes, it will go up on YouTube. and it's saving the changes, but that's pretty much it. That is how 
I do a video from start to finish. I don't know if whoever's watching this thinks that this is an easy process. It's not, it's time consuming. Um, like I said, the editing and getting it uploaded and processed, that is the largest part. Because if sometimes an hour video, it will take me like an hour and a half to edit. Because sometimes I'll speed it up, especially my tutorials. Like when I'm doing my Canvas tutorial and I am like mitering the corners and want to speed that up for you guys, I have to split the file. There's a whole bunch of things you have to do in editing to make it look pretty if that's what you want. So that's it for me for this video. I hope this was helpful to those who want to know how I do my videos. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.